You need a nap. Geralt, must you ruin everything? I had him just where I wanted him. A gin in a bottle. It's like a fairy tale. Well, a bottle is your grandkid be born. A hairy young fawn. Bleeding in the Hey guys, what's up and how's it going? So today we're gonna end up discussing a little bit more on Dandelion or as he's known in the show as Jaskier. Jaskier's official name is Julian Alfred Pancras. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. He was born in 1229. He was also a Redenian. I believe I'm pronouncing that right too. If not, I'll end up correcting it probably up here. And he was a scholar of the University of o Oxenfurt. Not to be confused with our modern day or real life um, Oxford University. Hi, how are you? I never thought I'd hear myself say that. So a really cool thing is his name is actually Jaskier. So the reason why they're calling him Jaskier in the show is that was his official name. Whenever you take Jaskier and end up translating it into English, it actually stands for Buttercup, which is really funny to me. His original Polish name was actually Jaskier. So it's Jaskier, Dandelion, it's not a last name or anything, but like I said at the beginning, his real first name is Julian Alfred Pankaz. That is a mouthful. Take a shot every time you say that. I try to say that five times fast. Just kidding. Don't do that. That's a bad idea. So the story of Daniel Lang goes a little bit like this. He was basically a failed poet before Geralt ended up finding him, as we can see from the first episode with him. To stir up a potion so that your lady might get an abortion. Abort yourself! Oh, oi, oi, ah! the fuck off! I'm so glad that I could just bring you all together like this. Unbelievable. So, whenever Geralt ends up meeting Jaskier in the show, better known as Dandelion, he ends up getting thrown food at him, and he's basically an, an overall failed poet. And Geralt, at this point, is known as the Butcher of Blaviken. So in the past scene, as you saw, whenever he ends up like cheering and everything, and he said, hey, you were the only, he ends up saying, you were the only one that didn't end up saying anything. He's like, you must be the White Wolf. I love the way you just sit in the corner and brood. I'm here to drink alone. Good, yeah, good. No one else hesitated to comment on the quality of my performance, except for you. You're the Witcher, Geralt of Rivia. Called it. Dandelion has the great thought of, I know, I'm gonna end up traveling with this guy. Look, I heard your note, and yes, you're right. Maybe real adventures would make better stories. And you, sir, smell chock full of them. So he starts following Geralt around and he starts watching his heroics and everything. The first one we end up seeing in the show is whenever they basically go after the satyr, and they end up seeing he's actually stealing for a group of elves so they won't end up starving. Geralt, it is a devil. Oh, I have to see this magical, this mythical. You were stealing for them. I felt for them. They were forced out of Dol Blathan. Now, the relationship that Geralt and Dandelion have is very unique. Oh, this is brilliant. Oh, sorry. It's just Geralt's usually so stingy with the details. So, Dandelion first met Geralt at Feed Town of Golit and Adrian, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. The poet had knocked up a girl under the magician's podium, her first four sturdy brothers were looking for him all over town. They threatened to basically pitch him in a, to cover him in pitch and sawdust. The so-called Valley of Fire seemed just right location for the duo supposed to escape. He basically ended up going down this chute and then he ended up meeting Geralt and he basically ended up employing him and Geralt and Dandelion have this kind of symbiotic relationship. So pretty much Geralt was known as the Butcher of Blaviken you butchered bodies in the streets of Blaviken. You're a beast! You endanger the girl. You took the law into your own hands. You made a choice. Danny Lyon knocked up a bunch of girls or wives, and then he would need protection. Proper look at the little shit's face. But that pimply ass. I'd remember anywhere. Well, uh, uh, ah, Geralt. Uh, Forgive me, my lord. This 
Happens all the time. It's true. He has the face of a cat and a coward. But truth be known, he was kicked in the balls by an ox as a child. What? That's tr true. And Geralt kind of steps in, saves the day, and in turn, he ends up building up the mythos of Geralt as the White Wolf. I promise to change the public's tune about you. At least allow me to try. That's why we had to call him the White Wolf. I'll take one of my Toss a coin to your witcher, oh valley of plenty. Whoa. Toss a coin to your witcher, a friend of humanity. You're welcome. And now, Witcher, it's time to repay your debt. What debt? You're probably asking yourself in your head right now. Well, I'll tell you, I've made you famous, Witcher. Geralt's name before all this, you have to remember, is the Butcher of Blaviken, which it should, wouldn't be very good for business if you think about it. So Dandelion ends up traveling with Geralt and he ends up getting a bunch of different stories that basically don't suck. So he ends up getting all these different mythoses from Geralt and he gets real source material to work with. So Geralt in the TV show is really funny with Danny Lyon's character. He ends up saying that's not how the story happened. It's not how it happened. And Danny Lyon basically says, but you have to follow the muse. You have to end up, you know, bolstering the story. You have to end up explaining, you know, more than what actually was there. He can't be bleeding. That's not how it happened. Where's your newfound respect? Respect doesn't make history. And funny that Geralt was basically like, no, 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 that's that that that's not how it happened. Geralt is very straightforward, dry to the point, and Danny Lyon is a poet, so he obviously has to create something more feasible for him to tell an audience. And he mentions this throughout the books. He ends up coming back to Danny Lyon eventually and says, That's not how it happened. You know that's not how it happened. Danny Lyon says, just let me do the tailing. You just go around and you end up getting a coin toss to you. So in the books too. In The Last Wish, whenever Geralt goes to Pavetta's court in Sintra, it kind of happens a little bit different, and I don't really want to get too, too into it on this video because I want to make an entire video dedicated to Sintra's court. So in the TV show, Geralt is brought to the court to actually defend Dandelion in case anything goes awry. One measly night of service, you will gain a cornucopia of earthly delights. Food, women, and wine, Geralt! and he was hired on to basically be a musician for the night on the loot. Because at this point, he's been kind of growing the mythos. You have timelines at this point. Ciri is in the present, Yennefer is way, way in the past, and Geralt's way, way in the past too. Because Geralt and Yennefer are both at least a century and a half old at this point in the story. So at the core of Sentra, uh, Ciri is not obviously born yet because Pavetta is pregnant with her, which is how he ends up invoking the Law of Surprise. But the entire reason in the next Netflix show why Geralt is there is because he's there to defend Dandelion. So Dandelion at this point is very important in the show. Without him, this entire thing of how all the destinies combined and intertwined. Remember how I referenced in the first episode how everything is intertwined in this universe how it's everything's intertwined and i think they're really trying to sell that home in the first one it was just a monster contract he was invited to pavetta's court in sintra to kill a monster the monster turned out to be dooney which as we found out was not a monster spoiler he was actually a man that ends up shape-shifting at midnight because of a curse Geralt ends up having this moral dilemma because dooney is not in fact a monster he's actually a man that was cursed and that kind of goes against his witcher like code of ethics but but what this is telling me from the producer Lauren Schmidt is she's trying to show these intertwining destinies throughout the entirety of the story. It's also worth mentioning that Dandelion was offered his services to the Redenian Secret Service and it's very in his character that it wasn't really seen in their services. He was kind of doing it on his own. But the main thing to remember about Dandelion going forward is that he's a bard his loyalties are to Geralt because Geralt's pretty much the one that made him rich. And I think we're going to see that progression as the story goes on. Through the books and games, he kind of starts with rags and he starts to get richer and richer and richer. And he has purple royal cloths later on in the video games. I found an interesting article online that it said he was trying to wear the hat, but I guess everyone on the set just kept laughing and laughing and laughing and they couldn't really get any work done. And that's the reason why the hat wasn't 
brought along i just think that was a cool story to share anyways guys thank you so much for watching again i'll put that last episode over here if you want to catch up on it and then also i'll end up trying to do another episode as soon as possible i hope you guys like this series i would this finishes up the deep dive into dandelion jaskier also known as buttercup's character so until next time guys 